Hello everyone, I'm Clark Towson, and in this video I'd like to talk with you about the technology that we use to film the once a month Showgirls event at the Pride of Our Footscray Community Bar. Technology is something that I'm very good at. I'm a degree qualified computer scientist with over 20 years of experience working for the federal government. I work in high performance computing, or supercomputing as it's known. Whilst my main interest is science and technology, I also do the media production for the Showgirls Nights, as I'm very interested in the arts, and I've studied lighting, photography, sound, editing and filmmaking, among other topics, and I knew that I could add value by becoming a part of the Showgirls team. The Showgirls production team communicates with each other using the new Hollyland Mars T1000 full duplex wireless communication system. We have two of these systems, which I purchased using some of my Bitcoin profits, which are hooked up to each other. This enables us to have 10 team members communicating with each other simultaneously. I have a headset on, my business partner Paul does, and our volunteer Scott does as well. The director of the show has a headset, the spotlight operator, the backstage production showgirl has one on, and so does an assistant. Each of the receiver packs are connected to external batteries that give a total of 28 hours total talk time. Such a long talk time is required for long shoots like the annual Miss Gay and Miss Trans pageant, which we also cover. The Holy Land headsets I chose over other competing headsets specifically because these headset receivers can be connected up to external batteries for a much longer talk time. I didn't want team members to be swapping batteries and charging them during a production. The ability to communicate effectively on set is vitally important for a smooth running production. There are so many things that need to be done and without the ability to communicate efficiently and effectively on set, it takes a lot more time and effort to get things done. People run around more than they need to and it is much more stressful than it ought to be. I consider my greatest technological contribution to the Showgirls group has been these headsets. I was the person that researched them and pioneered them on set. I did this because I could clearly see that communication troubles were the number one problem the team was experiencing in every single production. Team members were not as productive as they could have been because we could not communicate effectively in the high noise environment that is a bar or nightclub. I tried walkie-talkies, but these were not good enough because A, they were not loud enough, B, they required a button to be pushed to talk, which made it difficult to film and talk at the same time, and C, they were not full duplex, meaning team members couldn't talk at the same time. It was only in late 2019 and early 2020 that full duplex wireless communication devices using the DECT protocol digital enhanced cordless telecommunications became relatively affordable for small productions like the showgirls. Effective communications greatly enhances teamwork and the truth is that teamwork is at the heart of all great achievement. What better way to improve teamwork than to empower the team to be able to communicate more efficiently and effectively on the showgirls nights. I saw it as my role as a leader to show the way on this initiative. Joe Rojas, one of the showgirls, is fond of the saying, if you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. As a Myers-Briggs INTJ, I don't step into a leadership position unless I see that I'm able to make a great contribution. So this was my opportunity to be the sunshine and light the way to help influence the group and demonstrate to them the value of communicating with each other via headsets at each production. Ultimately, my goal as a leader is to empower the group where I can and to replicate my videography, media production, management and leadership skills in others and ultimately to create more leaders. If I as a team player can help make the team great, especially by improving something so vital as communications between team members, then I am more valuable than an individual great player.
Besides, I don't think that I would look very good in makeup, high heels, and a dress performing on stage. So I do as much as I can as a leader to help the showgirls team succeed at the back end of the productions. That's another leadership principle in economics right there. Knowing where you fit in, knowing what value you provide to the group and what the supply and demand of that value is. When we're able to supply the needed demand, skills, knowledge, experience, and so on, our influence increases and we're able to incite others to action. Our influence increases when we're able to provide the most relevant value and thus we become capital in the system. Anyway, enough about leadership, on to the more technical stuff. The Showgirls is shot with three Canon 80D digital SLR cameras in video mode. The ISO is set to 100 and the aperture is changed depending on the brightness of the lighting. Field world LCD monitors are attached to the main and the stage cameras to make it easier for the cameraman to see the footage being captured. I man the main camera, my business partner mans the stage camera and we have a volunteer cameraman behind the gimbal camera. We use a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter F4 IS L series lens to capture the showgirls from the front and the Canon kit lens to capture them from the stage camera and the gimbal camera. The showgirls videos look so great due to the main camera lens being such a fantastic lens, perfect for this sort of shoot. I would like to upgrade the stage and the gimbal camera lenses sometime in the near future. The tripods used are Manfrotto with R128C video heads. One of the tripods my business partner has modified to give extra height. This is important because the location of the main camera is behind the dance floor and people keep getting in the way of the camera, so the extra height is important. The gimbal we use is a Moser Air 2. This is an excellent gimbal. It's heavy though, and a lot of practice is required to operate it successfully, but it is very good. Stage lighting is driven by a ShowPro LED Drive 4 lighting system. The spotlight is capable of projecting a very bright spotlight, which the Canon 80D really picks up well from the front angle. We have to be careful the showgirls are not overexposed and I watch my aperture carefully during filming, opening or closing the lens to increase or decrease the amount of light reaching the image sensor. Most of the time I'm filming at around A5.6. Paul and Scott on the stage and gimbal cameras need more light so they're filming at a lower aperture. From the side angle the light hitting and reflecting off the showgirls is not as bright as the light from directly in front of the spotlight where my main camera is. I recommend the book Light, Science and Magic by Phil Hunter, Stephen Biver and Paul Fuqua. I learned lighting many years ago before I learned photography or videography. Understanding the principles of light is really important to capturing high quality footage. The showgirls videos look so good due to the brightness of the spotlight and the camera being set to capture them as perfectly as possible in this great and bright light. Sound is a really important element as well in the showgirls videos. Sound is captured on three Zoom H6 audio recorders. It's better to have perfect sound and not so great visuals than the other way around. So we go to great lengths to ensure that we capture sound perfectly on the night. Sound of the showgirls hosting and singing and the music for the performances is recording from the Pride Bar mixer using the first Zoom H6 audio recorder. This is a diagram of the mixer. You can see we connect the audio cables from the mixer ports into the Zoom H6. The mixer is located near the main stage and it's very difficult to get access to monitor the sound levels. So hooked up to the Zoom, we have a Bluetooth device which allows us to monitor the sound remotely via Bluetooth headphones. I keep the headphones with me near the main camera. We use four 
ATT-488 attenuators to ensure the sound into the zoom is correctly attenuated. Attenuators are devices that reduce the power of the signal without appreciably distorting its waveform. Attenuators are effectively the opposite of amplifiers. Whilst an amplifier provides gain, an attenuator provides loss or gain of less than one. The audience sound is captured using a Rode NTG3 directional microphone on a boom pole with a blimp and furry wombat. This microphone is plugged into the second Zoom H6 audio recorder. The NTG3 is a very highly rated microphone that is used in movies, commercials and other productions where it's not appropriate or desirable to use lavalier microphones. Interviews with the performers are captured using a Rode Reporter microphone, which is also hooked up to the second Zoom H6 audio recorder. A reporter-style microphone is essential in a bar and nightclub environment, as the music is so loud, and it's the only way to get clean audio and hear people clearly. The Rode Reporter is an excellent microphone perfectly suited to our work. It's still rare that you'll find a volunteer media production crew like ours using the amount of technology that we're using. I built up my gear and my skills over the course of some years. The second Zoom H6 audio recorder is attached to a backpack, which I've modified to wear on the front. This gives us the ability to have a person move around with the Zoom and get close to the people being interviewed whilst also monitoring the audio on a set of headphones. I have the Rode wireless filmmaking kit and the Rode reporter, and I much prefer to have the transmitter and the receiver belt packs close to each other and monitored at all times to ensure the audio is perfect. The third Zoom H6 audio recorder is used to record the communications from the team over the Holy Land wireless headsets. We use this audio as a creative touch in the videos, in the same manner as the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show does. Okay, Victoria, the other down. reason we record the audio from the team is so I can go back over it in the days that follow and take notes and decide on future gear purchases that might be needed to provide a higher quality media production at the next event. Having the team communicate their ideas on the night and recording these ideas means we don't have to have pens and notepads, which are not ideal as it's hard to see and write in a dark environment. We use two small torches from Coles to see into the video and the audio bags. Editing of the Showgirls videos is done in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019. Multi-camera source sequences are created and edited. All the footage from the SD cards on the cameras are copied to my Drobo 5N, which has 16 terabytes of disk space. The drives are Western Digital Red Drives, WD40EFRX-68N, and the Drobo has an MSATA SSD accelerator. The footage from the SD cards is given unique and descriptive file names to make it easier when editing and the Premiere Pro project file is saved and reused with everything done with an eye to reproducibility. Reproducibility is an important principle which I'm still trying to do better on. The idea being that I can replicate my video editing skills in other team members and volunteers and share the project files and editing work with others. The Showgirls is every third Saturday of the month, and the editing takes a lot of time and effort. Beginning on the Saturday night after the show, I copy all the footage from the SD cards to the Drobo, and then on Sunday morning, I name every file very carefully, name the sequences and create bins for the videos, the audio, photos, titles, etc. And I get all this done before I do any editing whatsoever. Being well organised and pedantic about this pays off dividends over time. The editing, I'm able to do three videos on the Sunday and then I do two videos each weeknight after I come home from my day job. I'm usually done by the end of the week. I upload each of the videos to YouTube after I've edited them and I schedule them for release. 
In all previous Showgirls videos, the singing and the music has been captured from the mixer to a stereo mixed down track, the combines track th three and four. The future sound will be captured on individual tracks so I can mix the sound myself in Premiere Pro. This is because what sounds great for the guests on the night is often different to what sounds great for viewers on YouTube. As an editor, I need the ability to fine tune the audio levels, particularly for the singing videos, where it's desirable to be able to make the singer's voices louder and turn down the volume of the music track. To make it easier to mix, we start the recording simultaneously on each of the three Zoom H6 audio recorders. The batteries on the Zooms don't last very long, so we have external battery packs connected to them. We use Signet 15,000 mAh batteries. The batteries inside the Zoom are all rechargeables. We just use Coles and Energizer brands. The videos are edited on an AMD Ryzen 5 1600X 6 core processor PC, which has 32 gigabytes of RAM and two NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 3 gigabyte graphics cards. Premiere Pro is configured to use the GPU to encode the videos. I also have a MacBook Pro 2014 model, which I need to upgrade, that I occasionally switch between this and my video editing PC. The batteries we use in the field world viewfinders are Sony F970 types. I have plenty of these batteries as spares for the LCD monitors and for the Holy Land communication system. SanDisk 128GB SD cards are used in each of the Canon ADD cameras. The footage captured on the nights is saved to a Drobo 5N, which has five 4TB Western Digital Red hard drives, WD40EFRX-68N, and an MSATA accelerator. The Drobo is connected up via my Ethernet into my home network. My workstation setup, you can see I use a television as a monitor. Sound levels are mixed down in Premiere Pro with Adobe Audition used to increase the decibel on the audio files if and when required. We always try to keep the levels on the Zoom recorders in the green so we don't have any audio peaking into the amber or red. To carry all my gear, we have a number of bags. The two main bags are Low Pro, a Low Pro Pro Tactic 450AW is packed with camera gear, along with the large Low Pro wheel bag. The rest of the bags are tradesmen's bags that I purchased from Bunnings. Over time, these will be replaced with more padded bags. Impromptu interviews are captured with two Rode Smart Lab microphones plugged into my Apple iPhone. We use an Arlec BT168 battery tester to ensure we don't have any dodgy AA and AAA batteries in any of the sound recording wireless gear. We have a Rode Filmmaker kit and that gives us another two wireless lavalier broadcast quality microphones. Amaran AL-M9 lights are used on the, ca on the gimbal camera. The AA and AAA battery charger is a VATA type 57285, which is a very fast battery charger, vital to use to charge our batteries in just a few short minutes. We have a set of wheels for the stage camera, which I purchased from eBay. They're unbranded, but they're very good. A Sekonic L308S light meter is used as required to determine lighting levels. Joby Gorillapods are also used as necessary. The mic flag and the microphone sponge in the color of the bar's logo branding was purchased by me directly from China. I attached the flag using blue tack that I colored black. The road reporter mic is not that easy to attach a standard mic flag to and I really wanted this style. Adobe Photoshop is used for all graphics and image processing work. Handbrake encoder was being used to make the final videos smaller, but I don't need that 
anymore as I've got fast internet now that I have the NPN and I've got a much faster upload speed in particular. Videos are exported in Premiere Pro in 1080p high definition and they're uploaded to YouTube uh, on a schedule that spreads out the videos a few every couple of days uh, and this is done to keep people interested and ensure that we don't overwhelm them with too much content at once. Numerous post processing in Premiere Pro is performed with transitions, titles, sound effects like fades and other effects to ensure the sound comes out of both speakers if the levels are too far left or right. This mostly occurs on the road mic we capture using the zoom. Voiceovers for the Showgirls videos are made using a Rode Procaster microphone and a Mackie Pro FX mixer. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this technical video about the technology we use to film the Showgirls nights at the pride of our Footscray community bar. Those of you that are interested in the technology side of our productions, if you're in Melbourne and you would like to volunteer, we would love to have you on board with us. Please get in contact with me. You can call me on 0432 359 166. All the best, everyone. I'm Clark Towson. I'm the president of Chrysalis Australia. <laughs>